after two years, we're finally getting our boat tours done. Tour, tour videos. <laughs> <laughs> after two years, we're finally getting our boat tour videos done. And in these videos, we will take you through our floating home seascape and her various components. And if there's anything that you want to know that we haven't shared in our videos, um, just leave us a comment below. Yeah, we hope you we hope you enjoy the videos. Morning. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start off with one of the two most important things on a yacht. What are the most important things on a yacht? The motor and the anchor. Those are the two things that keep you off the rocks. As you can see, Seascape is fitted with a 25 kg rock nut. Our anchor is attached to Seascape with a 10 mm galvanized chain. Okay, and that leads into our anchor hatch. Over there, yeah. Right, and it's all stored down below in the anchor hatch. Right, and um, we have 80 meters of chain on Seascape which is quite a lot um, and as you can see it runs through a windlass what is a windlass? a windlass is the sailing term for a winch so essentially this winch here, it's an electric winch it winches the anchor up and it also takes the anchor down as well it's nice and strong um, and has no problem winching up our 25 kilo um, Rockner anchor uh, along with 80 meters of chain and this chain is quite heavy okay. so between the anchor and this chain uh, she secures Seascape very well very well <clears throat> right you might have noticed this line over here this line is attached to the chain with a snap shackle right. and, and then to this cleacher this is called a snubber anchor snubber and what it does is the weight um, and the load from the anchor uh, is actually uh, carried by this cleat um, and then that takes the pressure off your windlass so if you're in a bad weather, bad sea, and there's a lot of rocking and rolling and pulling and jamming and jarring, that doesn't sit on your, on your windlass and mess up the gears in the windlass. So it's actually that pressure is actually borne by this line here. The other thing a snubber does too is that this line has some stretch in it, where your anchor chain has no stretch. Um, so it kind of buffets the rocking and rolling and the pulling of quite a bit. So I just want to talk a little bit about um, the anchor and the chain, the, the ground tackle that we use on Seascape. Um, according to the Cook Islands specification, a boat of this size, the Cook Islands ship registry, a boat of this size and design should have a 20 kg anchor. Uh, we recently fitted a 25 kg Rockner anchor and Rockner is largely regarded as the best anchor you find in yachting. Um, but having said that, it's, you know, talking about the 25 kg, having said that, it's the anchor and the performance of the anchor is not so much about the weight as it is about the design. Um, and I'll, I'll demonstrate that to you now quickly. So if this is, if this is the, sea, the sea bed, the anchor that we got is a plow anchor, plow anchor design. So what happens is the anchor actually buries itself into the sand so there's the chain links coming off like that okay so the anchor digs into the sand and buries itself in the sand and that's what actually holds the boat it's not so much the weight okay as it is the actual digging into the sand um, so what will happen is that so so long as that force is lateral then the anchor will hold because it's almost imp physically impossible to pull that anchor through the sand okay now when it's time to lift your anchor uh, because you want to leave you would sell your boat okay to this point all right 
where the, the angle is more perpendicular, that turns the anchor like that and you can quite easily pull your anchor up. So the more lateral force you have on the anchor, the better the anchor performs. So we've got 80 meters of chain. So the weight of the chain does, does play a role. Um, but it plays a role in that it keeps that angle more lateral. Um, so yeah, the weight does play, does play a role, it's important, but it's not the all important thing. It's actually the design of the anchor and the anchor's ability to dig into the sand. So the rule of thumb is the rule that we use. It's between five and six, I work on six. So you take the, the depth that you're anchoring in. Okay. If this were three meters, for example, all right, you times that by six. All right. The answer being 18, you should leave 18 meters of chain out between you and the boat. All right, so with a anchor chain of 80 meters, we could anchor safely um, in 12 meters of water, which is a lot of water. Uh, you, know, you know, generally you're anchoring in anything between 4 and 8 meters of water. Um, so eight, if it was 8 meters, 8, 6 is a 48. 48 meters of chain, we've got 80 meters of chain, we've got plenty chain um, to give us good holding. And the other thing to consider when anchoring is never anchor in deeper water than you can dive. So if your anchor gets snagged on a on rock or a wreck or any debris and you can't get it up because it's snagged on the bottom, you can then dive down and free it. So as a rule of thumb, I never anchor in water deeper than I can dive. When we were in Turkey, we actually got caught. I think we were in about 20 meters of water um, and our anchor got stuck. Um, although I can dive to 20 meters, but you know, to try and dive to 20 meters and then fight and wrestle with the anchor, not a lot of fun. Um, so that kind of brought it home to me that you don't ever want to dive in water deeper than you're comfortable diving and free diving and and then still having you know the ability to when you get to the bottom to free and and, and work underwater um, at that depth so that's something to to also consider if you enjoyed this episode give it a thumbs up and don't forget to 